More than 4 billion people live across this vast continent called Asia, and we are telling their stories. On this edition, Seas of Rubbish, plastic waste threatens the waters of the world-renowned Indonesian island of Bali. We go underwater to investigate. And Paradise in Crisis. One of the world's top tourist destinations, Boracay Island in the Philippines faces a severe environmental crisis. I'm Sophie Aluwalia, and this is Assignment Asia. Welcome to the program. Southeast Asia is home to some of the world's best islands with pristine beaches and crystal clear waters that attract millions of visitors every year. But for two of the most famous islands, their popularity has come at a cost. Here in Bali, plastic garbage floating off the coast and washing ashore is disturbing the ecosystem. The problem has worsened over the years, so much so that officials declared a garbage emergency in 2017. I looked into how Bali's garbage woes have impacted the world-famous island and what authorities have done or failed to do about it. Buried in a sea of plastic, that was how the British diver Rich Horner described his recent dive on the island of Nusa Penida, off the coast of Bali. His shocking video has since gone viral, showing Rich swimming through plastic wrappers, cups, straws, and bags. The footage has brought renewed attention to Bali's plastic waste problem. When we pulled into the bay on the boat, you know, I was there to hopefully film the manta rays, and you could see this massive slick, much bigger than anyone had seen before. And so I jumped in, and I knew that I had to film it, because I've got friends that are doing research on the island, on the plastic problem and the microplastics, so I knew I had to film it. But when I was actually filming it, swimming through it, it was just, it's kind of sad. You know, you, you, you see this much plastic and you know that it's, it's not good. And you know that it's going to be causing problems later. Bali's crystal clear waters attract millions of tourists every month. A popular vacation spot the island was named TripAdvisor's greatest holiday destination in 2017. But that popularity has pushed the island to its breaking point. In recent years, Bali has seen its plastic waste problem growing rapidly. Popular tourist destinations are usually covered in waste, mostly plastic, during the rainy season. In 2016, a research by the World Economic Forum concluded that there would be more plastic than fish in the world's oceans by 2050. Indonesia is the world's second largest producer of plastic waste. Here in Bali, an estimated 300 tons of waste enter these waters every single day. Bali's biggest garbage dump is overflowing as well with more than 1,000 tons of waste added each day and no recycling plan. Local governments are finding it difficult to manage solid waste. Indonesia recycles only around 10% of its waste, which can reach up to 64 million tons every year. That has made it the world's second largest plastic polluter. Beberapa sampah, terutama mikroplastik atau nanoplastik itu, masuk ke jaringan atau dimakan oleh ikan sehingga dapat e, tercemar di dalam e, badannya dan dikhawatirkan bila kita konsumsi itu akan e, terkontaminasi dalam tubuh kita yang pada akhirnya akan membuat penyakit salah satunya kanker kita tahu bahwa mikroplastik atau plastik itu susah diurai dalam jangka waktu yang sangat lama dan ketika sudah masuk ke dalam tubuh manusia yang terjadi adalah Pariyama uh, Hutasoet has seen firsthand the effects plastic pollution has on marine ecosystems. She has dedicated her life to protecting what she calls the rainforests of the sea. Uh, 
coral are crucial to the marine ecosystem, and Indonesia has some of the world's richest and most extensive reefs. But today they are threatened by human activities and plastic pollution, in addition to overfishing, coastal developments, and climate change. Pariyama's foundation was established in 2010 to conserve coral reefs around the world, but especially in Bali. Her team conducts regular underwater cleanups, mainly collecting inorganic waste. Ada juga botol-botol kita melihat juga banyak kemasan-kemasan makanan, sampai pampers. Oh my God, ke pampers. Kita juga banyak menemukan tadi bekas jaring-jaring nelayan dan paling banyak kita lihat memang sampah kain ya dan mungkin sudah cukup lama ya banyak sangat disesalkan karena banyak menutupi karang dan ketika kita ambil kita sudah melihat karang di bawahnya sudah sudah mati kondisi terumbu karang di tempat ini memang sangat memprihatinkan karena Tahun 2016, ketika ada kejadian pemutihan karang secara global, kawasan Nusa Dua itu terdampak juga. Jadi saya tadi sekaligus juga mencek melihat, oh my god, gitu banyak yang mati, mungkin ya banyak yang mati karangnya. Climate change itu nyata, ditambah dengan ancaman-ancaman akibat sampah, polutan, dan juga mungkin praktek pariwisata yang tidak ramah lingkungan. Itu bisa menjadi kehancuran bagi terumbu karang. Pariyama's foundation is not the only group leading an important initiative. Trash Hero is a local organization that brings communities together to reduce waste on Bali's beaches. The group has mobilized up to 3,000 volunteers in the past year and collected some 15,000 kilograms of plastic waste. Kita semua tahu, kita semua sadar bahwa Sampah plastik itu sangat berbahaya. Tapi bagaimana kita merubah kebiasaan sebuah budaya di mana masyarakat kita itu masih membuang sampahnya masih belum pada tempatnya. Nah budaya ini yang sebagian besar mungkin ada beberapa masyarakat bahkan tokoh-tokoh itu masih ada keraguan akan bisa berhasil atau tidak. Tapi kami sangat semangat karena kami punya perumpamaan. Batu besar itu bisa bolong bukan karena disemprot dengan air besar, tapi dengan tetesan air kecil yang terus menerus. Jadi kami eksistensi ini sangat diperlukan. Kami hadir setiap minggu satu jam, jadi dengan harapan keangkuhan budaya nyampah ini pelan-pelan akan berubah. Itu harapannya. Although concentrated in Southeast Asia, Trash Heroes Network extends to Europe, Africa, and the United States. Each cleanup brings together residents, government agencies, schools, and tourists to take a positive action on waste. Among those doing their share to solve Bali's garbage problem are Todd and Chico. Chico, who's from Japan, moved to the island in 2012 with her husband Todd. Every Tuesday at 5 in the afternoon, Chico and Todd help clean one of Bali's most frequented beaches in the busy area of Changu, home to some of the most popular restaurants and bars on the island. We just really appreciate Bali and love Bali, and so we come here every week to help contribute to clean up the beach and especially to make an example and just to um, lead by example and uh, try to do our part to keep the beach clean. Obviously, it's not a solution to the problem. Um, it's just uh, to try to show um, that it's, uh, you know, to not to do nothing about it, but to, to, to show the people that um, there is a problem and that uh, we can uh, contribute to the community and, and uh, do our part to clean up. Um, one of the key messages is around single-use plastics and, um, you know, to try to phase out single-use and use things like um, water bottles that are refillable and uh, bags that are not plastic bags, uh, reusable bags. The couple cooperates with independent environmental agencies like EcoBali. Every week, the garbage they collect is disposed in specific sites before being sorted at EcoBali's facility.
The group aims to promote recycling and composting and reduce the amount of waste at landfills. Kendala terbesar pertama adalah ini kita mengajak orang untuk memilah sampah. Sementara mungkin level kita masih di membuang sampah pada tong sampah. Jadi biasanya e, itu butuh waktu. Kendala kedua adalah belum ada kesadaran orang yang memproduksi sampah untuk membayar jasa sampah secara layak. Itu kendala sebenarnya. Although the cleanups are a sign of a growing awareness to act on Indonesia's plastic waste problem, efforts by activists and environmental groups are only a temporary solution. Tourism remains Bali's biggest economic driver. Many local businesses and families depend on foreign tourists to earn an income. But a worsening garbage problem in the world-famous island would mean fewer visitors and in turn a sluggish economy. Horner says it's important to influence people's thoughts and behavior through education campaigns. I grew up in the UK and as a child um, we had uh, this campaign called Keep Britain Tidy. So that effectively brainwashed us as children um, that dropping litter was bad. So we instinctively now think that way. So um, out here in the developing world in Indonesia, uh, I don't think those programs have happened yet and, and they would be a very easy, quick and easy way of changing the behavior. Uh, and doing, you know, um, teaching the kids will mean that the next generation that comes through um, should be um, responsible, especially with, you know, with plastic. In 2017, the Indonesian government promised to save the country's waterways from drowning in waste. Although it's a challenging objective, the government says it shows its commitment to creating a cleaner, greener and plastic-free future. Indonesia aims to reduce plastic waste by 70% by 2025. Authorities admit it won't be an easy task as the country seeks to attract more tourists to sustain its economy at the same time. Coming up, the ecological crisis facing the Philippine paradise of Boracay. International travel magazines have named it the world's best island. But in recent years, unchecked tourism in Boracay has also led to an environmental crisis so severe that the country's president ordered it closed for half a year. Barnaby Lowe visited the island in the central Philippines to see the extent of the problem and explore its root causes. The island of Boracay in the central Philippines with its powdery white sand and picture-perfect view of the sea has become a favorite among local and foreign tourists. In 2012, Travel and Leisure magazine named it the world's best island. Few would disagree. It's beautiful, yeah. Para sa akin, hindi naman ito madumi. Makita nyo naman, yung wangin, maputi. Tapusin mo yung problema sa Boracay. I do not but Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte disagrees. He says Boracay, with its uncontrolled development, has become a cesspool. In other words, filthy. And according to an interagency task force formed to assess Boracay's environmental health, it is. The biggest found was the illegal discharge of uh, wastewater into the ocean into the waters. Uh, it has caused a lot of concern because the levels that we have seen in terms of particles is at 18,000 uh, E. coli, coliform, when the average allowed is 400. So is it a cesspool? Yes, the, especially in that area where the discharge is happening, definitely. That area is not where most tourists are. It's on another side of the island called Bulabuk Beach, 
more popular for kite surfing and other water sports. Ken Nakor owns a kite surfing school here. He says he can't say President Duterte was merely exaggerating. I know the water. If I can send the smell in Facebook, the smell of the bulabog, only now we can see the photo, the video, what's coming out. If we can send by Facebook the smell, then we'll see. So you've seen the water, the black water? Yeah, we've seen it. And then not only me, there's only lots of foreigners are here too. Huh? Since you can see there is a long steel pipe here. It's actually connected all the way to the other side of the island where most of the hotels and restaurants and other establishments are. Now those establishments that do not have their own wastewater treatment, not connected also to the island's wastewater treatment plant, their wastewater, which consists of different kinds of waste, human waste, detergent and what have you, they all end up here. This is likely the cesspool President Duterte had described in a speech. But given that most of the pollution comes from businesses on what's known as White Beach, President Duterte has ordered the entire island of Boracay closed for tourism until at least October 2018. The recommendation is to do really the big work, the bulk work in 60 days. Because Secretary Tejo has said that if those big works can be done in 60 days, we can already partially open slowly some parts of the island. And when you say big work? The upgrade of the uh, uh, water and discharge lines, the demolition of the 25 plus 5 easement, those who have crossed that, and the clearing up of uh, structures built on uh, uh, wetland and forest land. The short-term impact could be damaging. Boracay contributes to some 20% of all tourism revenue of the Philippines. In 2017, more than 2 million people who visited the island spent more than a billion U.S. dollars. Tens of thousands rely on Boracay's tourism activities for their livelihood. Now, demolition work has begun. They're bracing for the worst. Here, yeah, this is my land soon. That's it. This is, this is what's going to be left of your yeah, um, establishment? Yeah, after working since I was 22 years old, I'm 39 now. Yeah. I've been dreaming this building to build for many years. And yeah. then after 15 days, 6 months, your dream is gone. And you were never made aware that where you were building was supposedly illegal. Yeah. You were never made aware of that. All I'm aware is about we follow the rules from LG, LGU and then we follow the, the measurement of the first building here, which we, I'm talking about the seven stone. The national government says it is leaving no stone unturned in its crackdown. Local officials will be made accountable as well. But the ones bearing the front right now are the business owners and their employees. Everyone, including those who complied with environmental laws. We cannot sleep right now. We're terrorized, like scared what's going to happen in the island. Like my worker, they cannot sleep. Where They're thinking where they're going to get their money to feed their kids. I'm talking about mine only. Huh? What about the big, big hotel I've worked in there, like many workers? Employees of this resort, for instance, West Cove, which was built on a forest land, was one of the first to get closed down. In fact, the local government has been trying to shut down its operations since it opened in 2009, but the management of the resort has managed to resist. Until now. I'm still hoping that we could still get justice in spite of it all, because um, when you review our documents, we, we did everything to, to comply them. All the requirements from the national government and requirements and permits that needed by the local uh, government. E even though technically you're, you've been operating illegally? Yes. Um, um, illegally in the sense that um, 
we were asking them to process our municipal permits and they don't want to give it to us. So what will you do as a businessman? Many of the resort's employees stuck around as the management fought closure orders. Now they're faced with the prospect of losing their jobs with no other opportunities available in Boracay. Isa sa mga iniisip namin or worry namin is paano po yung pag-aaral ng mga bata. So kailangan bang ilipat talaga muna namin sila? Anong, kasi dito sila nag-aaral sa Boracay. So kailangan bang ilipat muna namin sila? O, tapos siyempre, gaya sa amin ngayon sa West Coast, wala kaming ano, operation. So magkakasahod pa ba kami sa susunod na mga sahuran? So, paano yung pang-enroll namin since ito lang yung source of income namin? Ano, ano ang naging reaction mo nung una mo na dinig na sinabi ni President Duterte na Boracay is a cesspool. Kailangan isa lang natin ng Boracay. Ano yung naging reaction nung una? Una, maganda kasi iayusin. Pero bandang huli na mga balita na ganun pala mangyari. So, Ang sabi na ayusin sana pero iba pa rin ng ano eh may tinan pa na apektado rin ng lahat ng hotel. So ganun mm. uh, buri mauri pag uh, uh, Pero agree kayo na kailangan ayusin ng Boracay. O agree naman ako sir sa basta sa tama lang. Agree naman ako basta sa tama lang ako. Ano ayos. yung pero wag sana isara yung Boracay. Wag mm, sana isira kasi mm. maraming tao apektado. The fact is, most Boracay stakeholders agree that Boracay needs to be restored to its pristine state. No one agrees with this more than the island's first settlers, the Aki tribe. Sa totoo lang sira, totoo lang. Nang ano pagkadinig namin, abala din kami sabi ko, ay ano ba? Ay sabi namin, mabuti nga yan. Ah, kasi yung sa atin ay ginuha pa, sana ibalik i- Hayaan na lang yan sa atin, sa atin, atin talaga para magawa natin din ng plano kung ano. Puraka, in fact, is an ati word that means white sand. Delsa Justo, one of the tribe's leaders, remembers a Puraka that they had all to their own. Aboy maganda dahil lahat-lahat ang makikita namin dito, punong kahoy lang. Maganda kahit ngayon sa beach ka magpunta, abo, nakakasilaw yung ano namin buhangin. Hindi yan matingin-tingin lang tapos maano yan, mag-apak pa, pinakamalambot apakan mo sa noong mga panahon. May, may feeling ba kayo na inagawan kayo? Ay, huwag lang po man, sir, dahil kagaya din sa prime beach kami, ay dyan lang kami sa baybay katulog. Tapos ay sa biglaan. Simpre dali-dali lang. Ay, ang lungkot-lungkot ang ate, sir. But there was nothing they could do to stop the tourism boom. As years passed, they got more and more marginalized in their own land. And even as the national government had given them more than two hectares of land, they've only been able to occupy a fraction of it. So basically all this land that you see around me, some 2.1 hectares worth, was awarded to the Ati tribe of Boracay back in 2011, but it was only in that portion of the land, a very small fraction where they were able to put up their houses. The rest of the land is now being occupied by non-Ati people, mainly for business purposes. But the irony is that the Atis now rely on Boracay's tourism industry as well. Some of them work in hotels, bars, and restaurants, many in construction, while the Ati village itself has become a tourist attraction. Ako kasi, sir, grade trail ako dahil noong mga panahon, di alam ng mga magulang ko kung ano ang gamit ng mga batang eskwila. Ayun, may mga underwear, pero ako noon, hanggang nakapunta ako ng grade 6, parang mag-16, 17 na ako noon. Ginaanuhan pa ako nyan, sir, ginabuksan. Natingnan kung may pante, yan ang dahilan, nakatigil ako. Kaya ngayon, mayabang, mayabang kami ang mga nani, sir, dahil yun, mga, mga school supplies, dahil hindi naman talaga, totoo lang sila. Ma, maano kami, nasayahan din kami dahil ang pambuhay namin, nakakain na kami ng kanin na madalas. 
Belo. <laughs> dahil sa turista. <laughs> dahil dyan sa mga... Dahil din sa turista. Oo, oh, ay, ga pang ano ba yan, ga... Pag yung mga tag-ari nga ng mga hotel na yan, ay kami din ang ginakuha ang magtutrabaho. And so even if it may appear as if the Atis are finally getting some justice, they'd rather the businesses stay. So, ayaw nyo na magsara? Ay, sana sir, ano, so, sa totoo lang, pabor talaga kami. <laughs> Mahal na Pangulo nga, isara itong burakay na ito. Dahil, yun nga ni, nakakalungkot talaga ang gawa nila. Pero, yun na lang, na kung yun ay ang, yun ang mangyari, ay apoy nagbalik talaga kami sir sa ano, sa gapang-gapang niya, kung, yung para lang sa mga anak namin ba sir. In a way, the sentiment of Boracay's migrant community isn't different from how the Atis feel about the situation. They may want the old Boracay back. And what better way than to ban tourism altogether? For their mouths to feed and families to raise. For Simon Aza, I'm Barnabilo in Boracay, the Philippines. Although there's no debate over whether Boracay needs rehabilitation, experts say the question is how big an impact the government's efforts will have on the country's tourism industry and the livelihoods of thousands of people. That's all the time we have for this week. From Bali, Indonesia, I'm Fukina Aluwalia. Thanks for watching and join us again on Assignment Asia. Share your thoughts and contribute story ideas for future shows by contacting us on social media.